Hey, what's up everyone? So, decided that from time to time, I'm going to do videos like this, get a little bonus content on the channel for you guys, a little low effort, horizontally filmed smartphone videos where I just talk about general thoughts and things that are on my mind. Well, this time it's going to be something that's sort of related, sort of unrelated, but uh, one thing I do want to start doing here in the coming months is expand more into fitness territory and start giving you guys you know, some advice and knowledge and do a little advocacy on health and fitness because something I've noticed on the left in general is there aren't really a lot of buff guys. And you know what? We need to change that. We need to get more warriors. We need to get more buff guys and gals on the left. So from here on out, I'm going to do videos from time to time encouraging you guys to work out. So with that being said, I'm running a little science experiment, right? A little science experiment. We're going to we're gonna do a science. We're making some science, comrades. And uh, what I'm talking about is full body workouts every day. That's right. Daily full body workouts. Now, am I doing this yet? No. For the month of April, I am doing full body workouts four times a week, which is still above and beyond what you should be doing um, in order, like, minimum frequency. I say two to three times a week frequency for optimal gains, but... Sorry, I'm filming on this side. My shoulder got tired. But what I'm going to be doing is full body workouts five to six days a week for the month of May. Not the month of April, but the month of May. For the month of April, I'm sticking to full body workouts four times a week. But once May rolls around, I'm going to be doing consecutive full body workouts five to six days a week. So what's that going to look like? Well, for the first two weeks of May, I'm going to be doing Monday weightlift Tuesday, weightlift Wednesday, weightlift, then take Thursday off, and then weightlift Friday and Saturday, and then take Sunday off. So that's three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off, all right? And then say the last week of May, the last week, I'm going to train consecutively every day of the week. That's right, six to seven days straight, and then I'm going to back the frequency down to three times a week for June, the first month of June, or the first week of June, I'm only going to be doing two to three full body workouts, just lower frequency than usual. So why am I doing this? Because I'm, look, I'm trying to do a sufficient plateau buster. You see, as you get more advanced and as you become bigger and stronger, it becomes increasingly difficult to add muscle and strength to your frame because your body adapts and becomes acclimated to weightlifting. So what happens is in order to continue to grow, in order to continue to stimulate growth and adapt, you are going to have to up the ante in a sense. So let's say you're starting off weightlifting. You can bench 100 pounds, all right? How do you get your bench from 100 to 200 pounds? Well, obviously you start weightlifting. And however much volume you do, however many sets and repetitions, there's a set amount of sets and repetitions that you need to do. But if you're a noob, the very act of training is stimulating enough for you to grow. The very act of just getting under that barbell and working with it is sufficient enough to get you growing, all right? However, this is not always going to be the case. You go from 100 pounds to 200, 250 pounds on the bench, but then you plateau. Your strength gains stagnate. Well, what this means is that your body has become acclimated to the training load. So how are you gonna get your bench from 250 to 300 pounds? Well, the simple answer is you're going to have to increase the volume and continue to improve your work capacity. And there are a few ways to do this. One of them is just doing more sets. And this is where you start throwing in isolation. Now you're not just bench pressing. Now you're doing some incline dumbbell press or some incline bench. Now you're doing some extra tricep work. You're throwing a little extra work in. You're getting more work in to the gym, all right? And that's what's gonna get you from 250 to 300 on the bench, but what from 300 to 350? Well, you're going to have to start training like a 350 bencher. That means doing even more volume, and that means upping the ante even more. That way you can continue to subject your body to increase loads to adapt. And the stronger that you get, the bigger that you get, and the more muscle that you gain, the more you are going to have to increase the volume and the training loads in order to keep your body adapting. And it gets to a certain point to where you basically need to be in a calorie surplus and need to be training with lots and lots of volume in order to continue to grow. Well, that's sort of what I'm doing here, but instead of increasing volume, 
instead of the amount of time I'm spending in the gym, I'm increasing sessions. Now, with the increased sessions, it will be more difficult and it is going to be harder at first, all right? Because your body's used to recovering every 48 to 72 hours, every two to three days. However, by training more frequently, you're forcing new stimulus and new adaptation. So in order for the body to continue to adapt, it has to become acclimated to the new training frequency. So training more frequently is a, is a great way to continue growing because it's new stimulus. Now, so this is why I say if you're an intermediate lifter and you want to get to advanced numbers, one of the best ways to do this is to increase frequency, all right? Go from training three times a week to four times a week doing full body workouts. Now, there's other ways to continue to grow and adapt, but this is my method. This is the method used by many a championship weightlifters and many athletes, all right? What does what does the the what does the boxer do when he wants to get better at boxing? Well, he boxes more. He does more heavy bag work and he does more training. He's going to start training every day. Uh, what does the squatter do when he wants to increase his squat? Well, he squats more. What does the bodybuilder do when he wants to build more muscle? Well, he eats more. So the point is, is you have to increase the loads. And this doesn't just hold true for sports in general back on this side. It also holds true for anything in life. Anything you want to continue to improve and get better at, you have to do more of. And the more you put in, the more you get out, all right? So if you guys start following this routine like I have, where you're just doing daily full body workouts or doing more full body workouts, number one, I don't recommend this unless you have achieved intermediate or advanced numbers. Don't do this type of training until you're benching in the mid to high 200s, squatting in the 400s, deadlifting in the 400s to 500s, all right? Only then will you be ready. Once you've gotten through your beginner gains and you need to up the ante to continue to progress, all right? And you wanna train like a champion. You wanna do the type of training that separates a champion, all right? That's when I recommend it. Number two, make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, plenty of protein and calories. Make sure to foam roll if your muscles are sore, if you've got any aching or inflammation, ice, get ice packets and ice the inflamed area when needed, stretch and prioritize recovery, all right? And it is going to be very difficult, it's going to be very tough, all right? And you are going to be very sore all the time. I've, like, I've been, the last month I've been training four times a week, I've been sore a lot more often, and I've been beat up quite a bit, not to mention I work 30 to 40 hours a week in a warehouse moving heavy-ass packages all the time, so I'm basically doing manual labor all day long. So, but it's not about how you feel, it's not about the way you feel. No matter how much you might ache, no matter how sore you might feel, that is not the point. The point is that you're gaining strength and you're gaining muscle. So who gives a damn how you feel? The most important thing is that you're progressing and you're making progress in the gym. That's ultimately what matters. Now, that's not to say don't take breaks from time to time. If you've been training consecutively and you've been doing this training style, after a certain point, you should take some deload weeks. I would say once every five to eight weeks, you should deload and just have a week where you're not training as hard or training as frequently. And the point is, is that you're still lifting and you're still working out, but it's active recovery. And then once you've had your week where you're, your week off where you've recovered, this isn't a layoff, by the way. I don't, it's only a layoff if you haven't worked out, period. But otherwise, we're back over here again. So like I said, this is the way that championship weightlifters train. This is the way that lots of athletes train. And I've decided that I'm gonna experiment, run a little experiments. I'm gonna record my uh, numbers before and after the experiments, and I'll let you guys know how it goes. But so far, I'm making good gains on four times a week. After this experiment's over, I'm probably gonna drop back down to four times a week because I've been making plenty good gains as is. And I wanna save the uh, five to six times a week trump card for busting through plateaus and really, really getting bigger and stronger. So anyways, uh, if you guys are already into lifting weights, 
um, and you're looking for a good way to bust plateaus, uh, consider doing this. Consider, you know, squatting five times a week, benching five times a week, deadlifting five times a week. Well, no, not deadlifting five times a week. That's a little too much, but still you get the point. The point is the more you put it into anything, the more that you get out. And the difference between a champion and a gym rat, your standard gym rat, is the, the level of which you're willing to put in and what you're willing to basically subject your body to, all right? It's all about how much you want it. Now, of course, there's a little risk of injury. The more frequently you train, the more load that you subject your body to, there there comes a certain point where tissue integrity becomes a concern, which is why you want to prioritize recovery and why you want to train smart. That way you can make long-term progress because injuries will do nothing but impede your progress and hold you back. So if you can avoid injuries and balance maintaining tissue integrity with training intensity and you do and you play your cards right, you know, you're going to be making all types of gains. You're going to be getting big, you're going to be getting strong. You're going to you're going to be as fit as a fiddle. All right. So anyways, I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, I will report to you back on this little science experiment when it is done.